Hey everybody, three drinks down. I'm Nate. I'm James. And today we've got a review for you. Hey James. Yeah. Today is review day, but it's also a fresh crack day. Okay, calm, calm down, calm, calm, calm down, calm down. It's exciting. Yeah. But on the good old Four Roses Single Barrel. It's fresh crack time. I think you should do the honors. <sighs> Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Oh, Ooh. Ooh. all right, all right. So today we have Four Roses Single Barrel, O-E-S-O. -E and so, why well, thank you, my good sir. Of there course, of course. Mm -hmm. He's so proper. And uh, for those of you that are not aware, this is part of one of the 10 of the recipes they do. And so we just thought, hey, let's give this one a shot. But it also got us thinking a little bit, didn't it? it did. So it did we're going to do this one today. Would you guys eventually like to see all 10? I think I would. And then maybe, just maybe, would you like to see us like whittle all 10 of those down in the mega competition? And at the end, maybe James and I do a blend off against each other. Think about it. Comment below. Of course, of course. Yes, all the way up here. While you're commenting down below, letting us know if that's a good idea, which obviously it is. Make sure you like, comment, um, more, you know, other things. Whatever you're thinking. Could be time of day, could be that you You need really, a hug. Yeah, exactly. There you go. It's got you guys. But also make sure you subscribe. Please. Let's get into a little bit about what this bottle is and uh, kind of what Four Roses is all about. Uh, this particular bottle is uh, OESO. Uh, now, if you didn't know, each letter stands for something different. Well, realistically, only two of them actually change. O, meaning that it is distilled at Four Roses. Surprise. Uh, that never changes as, as far as we know currently, and I don't know if that ever will. Um, and then the second one is actually the mash bill. They have two mash bills over at Four Roses. There's one that's a high rye, which is 60% corn, 35% rye, and 5% malted barley. The other one is actually a higher corn and a lower rye. So you basically just swap those with 15%. So it's 75% corn, 20% rye, and still that 5% that's barley. A lot, that's a lot of math. Uh, you know, not really. You know, it still adds up to 100%. As far as I know. Math is not my strong suit. Allegedly. Really. Right. So tell me about the third letter. The third letter, S, also never changes, and it means straight whiskey, which again, I don't know that it ever will change. Hasn't changed up to this point. But the last one also changes the most, uh, considering there are more variations than the other three. This particular one is O, which is actually the rich fruit expression of their yeast, uh, at least so that's what they claim they get out of that fermentation. Uh, prior to distill it, I'm assuming. One thing that we did forget to mention about this particular bottle is 11 years and two months old at 108 proof. They do go into the barrel at 120 proof uh, and they do chill filter as well. Uh, but each one is going to attribute something slightly different. And really the, the biggest things is you're gonna find in these, obviously the proof bin and the warehouse and the aging in general, how old it is, but the mash bills and the different uh, yeast is going to give you those subtle differences that I think really will make each of these worth trying uh, and, and seeking out. So also kind of fun. So we've been playing around with a few episodes that we did some staves where they tried to change things up. Yep. Or Roses for a long time has been using yeast profiles to change things up in their flavor profile. Which so I love uh, as a brewer, you know, coming from a brewing background, I think that makes a whole lot of sense to me, you right. know? So there's so many variables. So we're hoping we're showing you guys all these things and opening your mind to it. If you already knew that, that's awesome. If you didn't know that, we're trying to make sure we educate some people occasionally on what we know, because we're just idiots. Yeah. Good, so. Well, we're just trying to be, you know, less idiots. Yeah. Yeah. It's time to uh, swirl the glass, I think. Let's swirl. 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 I gotta put your swirl face on. Oh. Swirl face. I get more uh, slight floral than I do fruit. Well, I was about to say, I was like, am I losing my mind here? Is this more floral than fruity? Your typical uh, rose water is coming out for me. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, what? We're thinking the same thing. <laughs> Stop. Yeah, whoa, hold the presses. But there's definitely red it's, fruit. It's really floral, though. A little bit of red fruit in there. It's been open since we obviously started the episode. Um, but man, I don't, I don't know if it's off gas all the way completely yet. It is still just kind of one note terrible. floral I'm for me. A nice, nice oak profile underneath there too. Man. Okay. So now, 
We've been swirling, we've been talking. Okay, been yeah, a I'm getting yeah. a little bit more deeper than just this kind of bouquet of flowers, which is great because that's not my favorite nose profile. Um, I'm getting like a decent spice character. It's definitely something that would accompany the sweetness. So I definitely would think what you just said, like that makes sense. Like it's a it's accompanying whatever underlying sweetness is here, it's, which I'm pulling apart is somewhat brown sugarish. Okay, sure. It's not cinnamon. I'm gonna back off the brown sugar and go with a slightly chocolatey note, actually. I do not get that currently. That's fair. But I, I some things are placing that and causing me to make it say it's richer, it's deeper than a brown sugar. I'm still, I've got to tell you, I'm still really missing that rich fruit that they're discussing and uh, are describing with them. Uh, but again, it's just the nose and it just got open. And also like, what do they actually mean by rich fruit? Maybe it's on the palate. Maybe. So. So my initial reaction is just much of the same on the nose. Uh, a lot of floral um, kind of perfumey like qualities. Um, not necessarily my favorite, but um, I feel like I'm missing something here. Maybe I want to kind of go back in and yeah. like come back. I got mostly the same experience. I did feel like I got either the alcohol or a touch of cinnamon towards the back, middle back, um, but really didn't get a hug. I didn't get a big hug. Like, you know, I love hugs. And um, I didn't get one. And I uh, really didn't do a huge, for 11 years, you would hope you'd get a little more mouth coating, but maybe we just need a second sip. So let's give it a second sip. That's slightly better. I'm gonna still uh, stand put with my floral nutmeg analysis of the nose, kind of going through with the palette for me. The finish is kinda, eh, it kinda just misses the, it just kinda like evaporates. You know, the, the hug is there, but not overwhelming. Mm -hmm. The mouthfeel is medium. Let me throw an idea. On that second sip, I did pull something different and it's not a tiny, yeah, leave that alone. It's not a tiny amount. <laughs> But I got like almost like an like those orange slice candy sugar on the sides. Yeah. Okay. I could definitely get there for sure. I'm the one who usually picks the orange. But this is more like those those gummy candies that have sugar all around them. Yeah. Yeah. No. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. So what I like about this is that it's not um, leaning one way or the other too heavily. It's not super sweet, um, but it's also not super dry and acrid. Um, there is a nice balancing act here with this as far as the amount of oak character you get. What I don't like about it is I'm just not a big floral man. Um, still missing that rich fruit component they're talking about with the with the yeast. But again, like to me, with something that's this old and that's even been said by um, by Brent a couple of times, is some of that uh, that delicate fermentation profile is going to drop off after a long period of time. So you let know, me, let me give a suggestion for the first time. Let's set this down. Come back five minutes. Five minutes from now. Let's do that. We'll see you in five. And we're back. We're back. Five minutes passed. We felt it was in our best interest because we just cracked this bottle. Walk away for a little bit. That's something that's perfectly okay. Because sometimes you're getting things, maybe not getting things you would get five or 10 minutes later. Right. Yeah, we we do this occasionally. Uh, we felt pretty strongly about this one that we needed to yeah, let this one just sit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nose is slightly different. It is uh, a little less perfumey, which is excellent for me. Mm -hmm. And still floral. Still floral, yeah. I think that's just probably gonna gonna be what this is, yeah. you know. Uh, and not necessarily not bad a bad it. thing, you know. Um, especially since it's a little less perfumey, you know. That's helpful. Yes. Yeah. Like more real flower, less, you know. Yeah, perfume. Well, let's get back to the taste. Oh shit! I just about forgot. Oh, man. Palette is much the same. Um, it's calmed down again on that that perfumey thing for me. Um, Get a bit, little bit more of that backbone sweetness. There's something else there. The fruit's starting to pop. There's a fruity pop. Yeah, fruity pop. That's a uh, uh, great. There is a little more fruit, and it, it's still. I'm still getting that touch of that orange candy, like I was talking about earlier. I I don't want to say cherry, but there's a red fruit there. I really wanted a little bit more out of this. I think I did too. I mean, if it, I'm not going to necessarily foreshadow or anything, I'm just telling it. Um. I'm not a huge Four Roses guy to begin with. And that's just, put that out there. I didn't want to put that up front because I don't want to jade you guys for watching this. But this one doesn't go a long way towards turning me to be a massive fan of theirs either. See, here's the thing is I have enjoyed uh, the Four Roses stuff. I said it earlier and I was pretty, you know, open and upfront about that. So we seem to be pretty aligned here. I think so. All right, James. So let's just pull this together. Let's get some reviews out there. What do you think? Um, this is a solid three Jameses for me. 
yeah. Just not, not terrible. Um, just not, not great. I think I'm, I'm in the same ballpark as you. Um, remember, this is out of five scale, right? So I think I'm three and a quarter Nates. Um, oh and the only reason God. I go a little elevated there is because I do want to give this bottle the benefit of the doubt. And when I come back and try it a second time, if I find that when it gets below that shoulder pour that it needs to elevate a little bit, I don't want to put it dead middle of the road, um, but it's close to middle of the road for me. If OESO is one of your favorite Four Roses combinations, uh, let us know in the comments and let us know why. Uh, let us know why we're wrong, you know? Um, there's a bunch of different Four Roses combos out there and there's one for everybody, kind of like the love story that Four Roses was founded on. Go look it up. It's look a it good up. story. We're not gonna tell you. That's a good story. You should look it up. But I think that this was a, was a review, review for you. you. Way back.